Today, I'm embarking on a mission, a very important mission, a mission that will take me to the east across three cities, all in a journey where I will cover more than 250 kilometers. I will visit three cities, one where I've been before and two that I know absolutely nothing about, but still very curious to learn what they're like. If everything goes according to plan, this mission will culminate in something truly special. My first stop is the city of Lublin. Lublin is a mid-sized city of around 350,000 inhabitants situated in the eastern part of the country. For me, Lublin isn't just some random city. It was the first city where we settled after crossing into Poland when my country, Ukraine, was invaded earlier this year. Now, Lublin is actually a special place for us because that was the first city that we stayed in after crossing the border from Ukraine. So this was like four some months ago, more and more at this point, we crossed the border from Ukraine and we needed to stay somewhere, right? Rent the Airbnbs, we didn't really know what the plan was. And at that time, we only thought we we're gonna stay, stay in Poland for like a couple of weeks and then come back. This was the first city and we, never been here before and I heard about it and I'm like let's go to Lublin you know instead of going you know to a place like Krakow or somewhere else we're like let's try Lublin and it ended up being a very very beautiful city and in fact I'm standing outside the hotel where we stayed for I believe two or three nights before finding uh, an Airbnb for something more long term this was the Archie Hotel here uh, this is not exactly in the center, but this is where we stayed. Great hotel, and there were a lot of other refugees here from Ukraine, so I hope they're all doing okay. A really good hotel, uh, really took care of us here. And what's interesting is that I remember I was at this hotel. We had windows facing the street right here, that street over there, and this whole area. And I'm thinking to myself, this is no longer Ukraine, this is Poland, everything is just cleaner more organized right away i knew that this was a, a different place this was a special place and uh you know we had really really good feelings at this uh at that time and we were like hmm, this feels really good this feels very different and this right here is where we got our first apartment it was an airbnb that that we got exactly for one month right here this apartment right here and we were living, I think, in one of these windows over there, facing this street. And that is also where I filmed that infamous video called Thank You Poland on the street right here, walking towards the end of the street over there. And that video went viral. It got a ton of views, and I think many of you found me through that video. I was just walking along the street right here and I wanted to tell everybody uh, what a good experience we had crossing the border. I wanted to really share that with you guys. And apparently a lot of you liked it. The video went completely viral, even had some uh, reactions to it. And I think many of you found me and this channel as well as uh, Marina uh, through that video. And yeah, that's that. So it's kind of interesting to come back here when we had no idea what was going on, we had no idea for the future, and now we're living in Warsaw, got a, got a lease, got our own apartment that we are renting. Crazy, crazy times. Crazy times, but it feels good to be back here. I remember how scenic Lublin was in the winter, but I must admit that it's in the summer when the city truly comes alive. And of course, Lublin is a completely different city in the summer. In fact, I don't even like, I barely even recognize it because last time we were here was at the end of February. And obviously in the summer, you know, it's all green, people are out, it's just gorgeous, you know, it's gorgeous. It's hard to find a city that's not beautiful in the summer here in Poland. I think all cities are, are just, you know, they come alive and they're still beautiful um, in the fall or the winter, but in the summer, I mean, look at this here, we're in the park, everybody's here in the park. And in fact, I don't think I've been to this part of Lublin before. This, this uh, square. 
I haven't really explored it all that much, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And here we have I Love Lublin. So it looks amazing. These uh, second tier cities in Poland are incredible. I mean, look how picturesque that is. You got the street, you got um, some really uh, old style, kind of old school buildings over there. Look how amazing that looks over there. Right there. Look at that street. You got a square here, people are just chilling. Mmm, beautiful, absolutely stunning. So look at this. This is absolutely as scenic as it gets. I even remember the very first restaurant we checked out after endlessly cooking meals at home. It was an American-style place that served burgers, ribs, with a great selection of beers. But instead of sitting inside, as was the case before, I decided to treat myself to an outdoor area. I think I'm gonna have the California. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna be having, a California. That looks about right to me and something to drink as well. Sorry, can I take the order? Yeah, poproshe uh, California. Okay. I, um, Czy jest uh, piwo bez alkoholu? E, tutaj będzie. Aha. E, mamy tak, żywiec zero, e, żywiec IPA zero, żywiec białe, Heineken właśnie i barka. Ta smakowa. A, Heineken poproszę. Heineken, dobra. Aha. To wszystko będzie? Tak, tak. Dobra, wszystko. mogę zabrać? A nie, nie. nie. Zostawić. Zostawić, tak, tak. Super, nie, nie ma problemu. Dziękuję. And as usual, I got my Heineken. But it's alcohol-free beer. I'm still on the um, on the alcohol-free train. Really, really good. Mm. Well, here's the burger. Look at this. We got our homemade fries, which I love. I love these better than regular French fries. These kind of country-style fries or homemade fries, whatever you call them. And we got the burger. Look at that. Looks pretty decent. Bon appetit to everybody. Hope you're having a great day. The next day I woke up, showered, and set out for a city that was on my list for a while. Zamash. Zamash, a city of 65,000 inhabitants, was founded in 1580 and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. While it certainly looked beautiful in the pictures, it looked even better in person. Well, once you see a big tour group right there, you know you've arrived where you need to be. And here we are entering the old town. This is why I came here for, to see the old town. You're greeted by this majestic cathedral. And this here is the beginning of the old town. Now, Zamash was founded in 1580. And the population here is around 65, 70,000 people. So it's a fairly small town, and I love my small towns, especially ones that are part of UNESCO, that are historical and beautiful. And so let's go in and uh, explore it a little bit. I also didn't have any breakfast, so I'm gonna be needing to get some breakfast in here, or brunch, it's already 1 p.m. And it's 27 degrees today. Really, really hot, but beautiful. This is kind of how it should be when you're exploring these towns. You want the sun, you want the bright colors to come alive. That's kind of what you want. That's what you're looking for. There we go, look at that. Look at this city. Now, you know the city is special when you see that. There's no doubt about it. This town is special. Look how beautiful it is. And when you arrive here, the colors, you know, kind of the majesty about it, you know, the majestic feel that you're here. And you know, the city is definitely special. And honestly, what is there better to do on a Saturday afternoon in the summer in Europe than exploring something like this? Amazing. And you know what, this town, you know, I've seen a bunch of other beautiful towns here in Poland. 
but there is something different about the city it's um just the way that you know there's kind of like no sidewalks just the way they're kind of like this these just streets and you know you don't have like a sidewalk on the side it's just it's just basically um kind of the bricks on the ground then you got the uh the buildings on the side that's it and then the middle yeah you got you know your cars can pass and stuff like that and so there's really like you know it's all it's all brick right and there's no like sidewalks right if you think about it and looks beautiful <laughs> looks unique I'll tell you that it looks like a special place we got some souvenirs for sale over there look at that some more exploration do over there maybe get a bite to eat in a little bit but I don't want to do like a touristy thing you know I want to do a local thing you know I don't want to go where all the tourists go I want to try something unique so I think that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be getting something something uh something unique here we have ice cream lode maybe i get some ice cream afterwards after my brunch and beautiful day today you got this clear sky over there the clouds just incredible incredible how it looks man ah it feels good to be here it's beautiful and to be completely honest with you this kind of city reminds me like a small colonial town in latin america so maybe somewhere in mexico somewhere in colombia peru countries like that um, just the kind the way the streets are done and these are uh, these houses it reminds me of a a latin american you know if you've been to latin america let me know if you feel the same because it does have that kind of feel to it and that's uh that i love i love those towns and uh i love towns like that to explore it has that southern feel to it and the weather definitely helps out there as well so i decided to stop by this place called figa smakim and in russian that's slang which means like you know i'll give you nothing like it means nothing it's like a, it's like a joking slang so i'm guessing it means something similar and uh, i found that funny so i decided to stop by they gave me a polish menu but i think i'll be able to to, to handle it hopefully i got my meal here i got my pork right here vegetables and some potatoes over there and of course we got a Zivich. Of course, on a scorching hot summer day, no trip would be complete without trying out a local ice cream away from the city center. Now it's time to get some ice cream and I found a place that's near the park, just a little bit outside this old town. So let's see if it's any good. Absolutely beautiful city. You just, you just know you are uh, entering somewhere special right because if you enter from this side you come in here you know this is this is not your ordinary town really really beautiful place but anyway i'm gonna be going out and i'm gonna be checking out the spark that they have down there and hopefully get some ice cream as well and there's the ice cream place let's check it out there's the ice cream look at this mm. It's actually really good, really, really good ice cream. Very flavorful, really good. The next day I woke up early, checked out of the hotel and headed to the train station. I had a big day ahead of me. I was heading to Helm, a city of 60,000 inhabitants located on the eastern edge of Poland, just 25 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. But I wasn't going to cross the border into Ukraine. I was meeting someone important. I arrived in Helm at 9.30 in the morning. That meant I had roughly two and a half hours to get breakfast and explore the city. I just arrived to a city called Helm. 
and this is a city all the way on the eastern side of Poland we are about I believe like 20 to 25 kilometers from the Ukrainian border now I'm not going to Ukraine today but I'm here to meet someone very very important as I slowly approached the center of the small but cozy city, I was greeted with a charming downtown just waiting to be explored. Okay, so this looks like the center right here. And it looks pretty cute. Cool city, cobblestone street. Very, very cozy. Look at this. No tourists. Here is what looks to be a main square and it's very cool, very cool little city. It's Sunday morning so everybody's still, you know, there's some early risers. But mostly it's nice and empty, nice and sunny. Very cool, very nice. After a late breakfast and some relaxation, it was finally time to head to the railway station to meet someone special. All right, I finished my long breakfast and that became a brunch. And now it's time to go to the main uh, railway station in order so that I can meet somebody. Alright guys, so I just picked up Marina's mom, she just came from Kharkov, where it was, it's just crazy, right, lots of, you know, things going on, bombings, artillery, stuff like that, so it's so good to have her uh, here in Poland, you know, be safe and everything like that, and now we're still here in Helm, we are going to be going to Warsaw on this intercity, so we're going to be in Warsaw in about uh, three, three and a half hours, so I would love to hear um, Marina's mom's impressions of, uh, of Poland or Warsaw because this is going to be her first time uh, here in Warsaw. Her first time here in Warsaw. So it's going to be interesting, uh, and Poland as well, it's going to be interesting to hear her impressions uh, later on. Finally arrived to Warsaw Central. Almost home. Ну как вам Варшава? This was her very first trip ever abroad. And nothing says more than being abroad and experiencing true Europe than being in Poland, a super modern and open country replete with European values, soul and heart. All in all, nothing gives me more pleasure and joy than exploring new lands and meeting new people. Traveling around Poland is a pure delight because visiting each city, whether it's big or small, is like opening a new Christmas present. However, if there is something better than going on a journey yourself, it's accompanying someone who is embarking on a journey of their own, especially if it's a journey they'll remember for the rest of their lives.